Hello everybody and welcome once again to SFF 180 and night two of Halloween 2016. I hope you're all seated comfortably. Now, on tonight's episode, the inexplicable disappearance of a teenage boy sends his family into a spiral of fear and mistrust in Paul Tremblay's Disappearance at Devil's Rock. That's the book I'm reviewing. I am Thomas, your illustrious host. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Now, there is surely nothing more devastating to a parent than the loss of a child. But, but when that loss is shrouded in the unknown, uh, in the sense that no resolution may be forthcoming, or even that having any resolution will just open up more unanswered questions, well, the effect is simply more devastating than I could possibly imagine. I mean, it just must be infinitely overwhelming. And that is the crisis at the heart of this suburban gothic novel. Disappearance at Devil's Rock perhaps works a little bit better as a, a case study in family turmoil uh, than it does as a mystery or a horror story. But I have to say, Paul Tremblay gets everything agonizingly right in finding his story's emotional core. 14-year-old Tommy Sanderson is the boy who disappears. He has been living with his single mother, Elizabeth, and his kid sister, Kate, in a community that is quintessential Americana. And his interests include playing Minecraft with his buds, Josh and Luis. It is a typical adolescence. His father died when he and Kate were barely out of diapers, and frankly, the man was never really all that engaged as a parent anyway. Not long before he had died in a single car collision, he'd done something a little bit out of character, cutting all ties and disappearing off of the grid for a few weeks. But while Tommy was a little too young to be all that impacted at the time, he's, he's gotten to an age where he is thinking about his father more and more. Because he is 14 and lacking an adult male role model, he is vulnerable in this area. This will be important. There's a massive park near where Tommy and his family lives, and the boys have a favorite hangout, a massive cracked boulder formation, which is formally called Split Rock, but which the boys call something else. Now, one day the boys go out there like they do, and of the three of them, Tommy never comes back. Now, from here, the story plunges with both feet into the family's emotional quicksand, and readers are spared nothing of the confusion and the mistrust and the existential anguish that comes from the shattering of the family unit. It isn't just not knowing whether Tommy is alive or dead. Elizabeth has to confront the fact that adolescence is that odd transitional period in your child's life when your parental blanket of protection is no longer as complete as it once was and is in fact being torn away as your child naturally begins establishing an identity and interests, uh, establishing a sense of self that doesn't include you. And for a kid, adolescence is that time in life when you start having secrets that you keep from mom. It transpires that a young man in his 20s, whom Josh and Luis know only as Andrew, had begun hanging out at the rock with them, sharing beers, you know, that first tempting if intimidating step into the, the strange, mysterious world of adulthood, and telling a bunch of strange stories about being a seer. But yeah, boys at 14 wanna, wanna be cool and fit in, uh, come what may, but Josh and Luis could never really understand what it was about Andrew that just drew Tommy to him. Slowly, facts surrounding these meetings at the Rock and the strange, shifting relationship between Andrew and the boys uh, begin coming to a disturbing light. While back at home, pages from Tommy's diary notebooks begin inexplicably turning up around the house. Hints of the supernatural, of possible ghostly visitations by Tommy, are deftly and believably handled by Tremblay as the possible psychological splash damage impacting Elizabeth and Kate as the investigation wears on. As for the mystery itself, there is a sense of inevitability to the proceedings, and while intense and disturbing revelations do come, none of them are especially surprising. The book's climactic chapters also have their dramatic effect somewhat muted by Tremblay's choice to tell them in the form of transcripts of police interviews, which for me kind of had the effect of drawing me out of the story rather than further in. But you have rarely seen the consequences and the emotional fallout from family tragedy handled with such raw, unflinching honesty. Just because ghosts might exist only in your head doesn't mean you're not haunted. And that is all I have time for in this episode of SFF 180. Everybody, tune in tomorrow night at midnight for the next installment of Halloween 2016. Remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit the like button, share the video, 
And above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is what helps SFF 180 grow as a channel. And until I see all of you next time, spooky reading. <laughs>